Support the Community is a pilot project that was developing a sexual health and leadership curriculum in Toronto. Conquer Groups is a basketball program that runs here in Toronto and brings together youth from across the city, from different neighborhoods and different communities, brings them all together to play basketball, a sport that we love as organizers and that the kids love as well. Well, Code to Community is a collaboration between Toronto Public Health, Schools Without Borders, Concrete Hoops, Kicking Aids Out, MISA, and Carolina for Kibera. Bring people from different communities together to develop this curriculum and develop a program that makes sense for young people in this city, in Toronto. It made a lot of sense for us to get involved with because what they're doing is applying um, life skills, leadership skills, and sexual health education into sport. And we thought it was a great way to put some deeper meaning to what we were doing on the court um, and get involved with, with youth and with some other issues that are facing them in their lives. Uh, basically why, why Kicking Aids Out is, uh, is because, you know, young people, we try to find a medium that young people can relate to. And you know, the only natural thing that young people love is sports and play. So using it, it sort of uh, breaks down the barriers between communities and young people within different communities. And then we are able then to, uh, to address the most important issue in this case being life skills. I did learn a lot of things, for example, um, things about sexual health, that there are more than, there's more than one way um, to prevent yourself from getting into situations that you shouldn't be in. And um, I learned that getting people together, um, you can learn a lot of things through different points of view, different experience. Everybody has a different experience with one situation. So um, presenting each scenario, you learn how to react in every situation. Yeah. My experience over the past five days with this Concrete Tube organization, kicking out AIDS, school without borders, I find it kind of unique because it's the first time that I've actually experienced this whole connection between different groups or organizations. It is, like I said before, it's unique, it's interesting to me, and I want to be more a part of it. And I would like to use an example, and, and I might request Ravi before you break to do another game, so that you, just, you might just see how you can play around with games. Ravi just did with us a game about chairs. And in that game, there's a thousand skills that you can learn from it. First is communication. How can you communicate without, uh, how can you communicate without talking? And we saw it happening whereby people are looking and they're more conscious, right? And you can use it as a concentration game, especially when you're working with young people who are not attentive. You can still change it too. He said when he started the game, you are eat until you get a seat, right? With HIV testing. Often when females, young women in Toronto go for HIV testing, why they're really going isn't to protect themselves, isn't to get treatment for themselves if they were positive, it's so that they would make sure they didn't spread it to a partner. Well, working with the leaders from Kenya is very experiencing and well put because I see that they are, they are teaching us many things that they've learned just by visiting in, in here, knowing that people from Kenya are doing what they want to do and uh, putting their minds to something, they're achieving this, and for them to have this much education and knowledge is really impressing because for them, from a, coming from Kenya, I'm, I'm guessing there's not as many people that can do this. So knowing that these people are in this program and I'm getting taught by these uh, leaders makes me know that these are serious people that want to help us, not just here. I think them coming here was a great experience. Um, they shared their views on what it was like to work in Kenya and in the Caribbean and then in turn brought what they did there and brought it to us and we learned different ways how to play their games. Um, it was really interactive. I felt like I learned a lot and each new activity we learned definitely had a meaning to it. So I mean, using what they use here, I can definitely apply it to what I'm later on going to use when I'm able to co conduct my own group. Right? Because, um, just because you're not with it or your culture's not with it or it's wrong in your beliefs, try to understand where the person's coming from. Ask them a question. Have a conversation. See where their mind's at. And maybe you could, you know, balance your feelings about the whole situation. Well, to engage us, my age group, people into talking about sex, 
Well, everyone my age group, I'm guessing, is interested in sex and everyone wants to know about it. So they have more knowledge on what is going on in the world now. And learning about all the different diseases helps us to know that it's not, you know, you just shouldn't just have sex just to be fit in with a group. You have to have your own knowledge and your own self-confidence that you have in yourself to know what, what you're doing and what the subject is about and what the knowledge you have to use that against it. First of all, when you're speaking to younger kids about sex, um, you need to make sure that everyone's comfortable, that know, they know that they don't have to, they don't have to tell any stories, that they don't have to give any experience, but um, that it's okay for them to, it's okay for them to tell some experiences, um, not all, that they have to be comfortable, and I think it's great because them knowing before the situation actually happens, um, it's great because then they'll know when to react. They won't second guess. They'll know when to say no, when to say yes, when they're comfortable and when they're not. Um, I thought it was a good experience because um, we may learn about it in schools, but we don't learn like the backups, like how do you get it, what do you do when you get it, where can you go when you get it. So I thought that was pretty good that you shared information like that with us. As the, week, the days went on, and it's like a story. It, it progressed, and Kibo pushed me, and <laughs> uh, I, I have to admit, I, I didn't hate it. But I love you all as a family. <laughs> the most effective tool I think I could take away is the teaching aspect towards it, because I have learned a lot of things in this week, and what I've learned, I want to incorporate it all together and output it out to youths, to other people who are listening. Well, uh, apart from apart from basically being exposed to a lot of sexual health information, and especially the Toronto context, I also now I re, I have reaffirmed my belief that you know. As young people, we are facing challenges which are almost similar, uh, maybe at a different, uh, to a different extent, and the impact might be different, but there's the same, same issues. So for me, I go back, you know, have reaffirming, you know, that young people can actually be agent, effective agents of change. That when you create a space, a forum where young people can be able to express themselves, give them room to argue out their positions and discuss different issues, that we can be able to not only first discover our interests and uh, take responsibility on the issues that are affecting us, but at the same time, that by creating partnerships, we can be able to work together towards building safer and healthier communities. Yeah.